Hello everybody, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Beans Recording Modular, and today I'll be walking you through my experiences with the new 4MS Meta Module, a module that allows you to build complex patches out of software modules internally or with VCV Rec and port them over to the machine. Originally, I was asked by 4MS to do a sponsored video where I made music and demoed the Meta, but I realized as I was working with it that what I was really doing was preparing for a review. As someone who has owned and reviewed other pieces of gear like this, like the Zoya, the Euroboro, the Bebo, and Hector, and Mod Devices pedals, I knew what I would want to know getting into a box like this, and it wasn't so much about how it sounds, it was more about how it works and how much you can get it to do. So that's what this video is. My first four days with the device, learning as I made patches, trying new things, and seeing how far the meta could be pushed, and how it was to use. What we've been looking at while I have been talking to you so far, is my first real patch. I thought, hey, let's go with the classic, rings into clouds. I decided to use marbles as my sequencer, so I loaded that up as well as rings and clouds. I started using the menus to make connections between the ports of the modules I would need to make, which you do by selecting the module, scrolling through its controls and connections, and clicking on the jack you want to connect elsewhere. Then you select an internal destination or a panel destination. Other modules are new cable, and any of the inputs and output jacks are new panel cable. The output of clouds, for instance, will go into my panel cables one and two. After that, I started to assign knobs from the software modules to the hardware knobs on the front of the meta module. You do this by selecting a module, scrolling to the parameter, selecting that, then clicking which knob set you want to use. There are multiple knob sets per patch, and you can switch between them. So you could have, say, one for your sequencers, one for your synths, and one for your effects, uh, etc. I also took this time to adjust the controls of my modules to where I wanted them to be, and this is where I ran into my first issue. As far as I can tell, there is no way to access any of the shift functions for modules like marbles or rings. This meant I couldn't access the scale settings for marbles and quantize its output to a scale without building the patch first in VCB Rec. This would also mean that any of the alt functions in rings are unavailable without making the patch first in VCB Rack and porting it over. Another thing that was bothering me was, at the time of me working with the device, there wasn't a quantizer I could find amongst the modules that it ships with, and that meant I couldn't quantize the output of marbles with another module. This may be adjusted later in upcoming firmware, as it was, the firmware for the device was still in development when I was working with the meta, which was up until Sunday, August 25th. If there are any uh, salient corrections, I'll put them in a pinned comment uh, in the comments, so check that out. Eventually, I got enough knobs assigned where I could play around with my set of modules, and it sounded okay. Marbles into rings in the clouds took about 50% of the CPU of the device, but it did work with no buffering dropouts or anything like that. So, satisfied with my first patch, I stopped for the day, shot off a bunch of questions to 4MS, and made dinner. My second patch with Meta may be my favorite sounding and a high point in my experience with the module. It's rings in the clouds again, but this time with slightly different settings and with a huge vibe that had me overdubbing two takes into what you hear now. Since I already had figured out how to get marbles to work, I wanted to see how to get MIDI working to play the instrument in Meta. I think one of the ways Meta is strongest is possibly as a live instrument featuring modular synths and effects. There's a demo patch in Meta that features MIDI into a bunch of modules that just works when you plug a MIDI keyboard into the USB in, so I knew it was possible. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the connection internally for setting MIDI note and gate into CV of the internal modules. I gave up and ended up using CV to gate and shot off the question to 4MS. They answered that, at the time of this video being produced, the only way to get MIDI connections in Meta was to use the VCV Rack MIDI module which isn't available in Meta itself. That means that there's no way at the time of the making of this video to make a MIDI synth in the module from scratch. Uh, and the MIDI module isn't available in Meta. And again, I will list corrections to these things in the video description if anything changes. Regardless, it sounded beautiful, and if you want to buy a meta just for rings in the clouds, you're going to be happy.
The next day, I finally had what I needed to make patches in VCB rack for Meta, so I decided to make a playable synth. From what I remember, there are like 600 modules shipping with the Meta, including new ones and ported ones. And some highlights for me are all the new 4MS modules, the Bafaco ones, and these ones from Nano. I decided to build a simple playable ensemble oscillator. So I grabbed a MIDI module, the oscillator, the stereo strip, and a shaped dual VCA and clouds. You build your patches exactly like you normally do in VCB Rack with the constraint of only using modules that Meta has access to and adding the 4MS Meta module to your patch. You connect IO to the module and VCB as you need, including your main audio outputs to the one and two out jacks of Meta. From there, you start mapping things. Clicking the ring around each Meta knob allows you to then click another module's knob you want to control. Each Meta knob can have multiple connections, and each of those connections can be scaled with a custom minimum and maximum range. That means that each knob can either be a single control for a synth effect or whatever, or it can be a macro knob that scales a ton of controls at once. After you're done in VCV, save your VCV patch, and then hit save on the Meta module within VCV, uh, and it will create a file that you bring on over to the Meta module via SD card or USB stick. Good news is uh, these can be XFAT, so they'll work on both Mac and PC, and Meta will read the card at any time, so you can take it out and put it back in as needed. Once you've plugged in your USB stick or SD card, you're gonna navigate on Meta to load patch, load your patch from the card, and get it rolling by hitting this play icon. There's a view on Meta that shows all the current knob assignments and positions, so you can remember what controls what. This patch turned out fine. It really wasn't meant to be anything more than a test of the MIDI module, and also that I knew how to map things in VCB. So satisfied with that, I stopped for the day and walked the dogs. The next day, I wanted to see how far I could push Meta, so I decided to make a generative self-playing patch with four voices. I set up four instances of mutable instruments plates driven by two marbles into two dual-shaped VCAs. The real standout of this patch and others is this awesome little mixer from Nano, I love this, and it's a great addition to VCV. I was able to select scales here in marbles and set everything to pentatonic, as one does. I mapped a page of controls for the marble sequencers, and then another page for all my plates and effects. And after that, I used the send on the nano performance mixer to make an effect send featuring the dual looping delay and the valley plateau reverb. I hadn't looked closely at the way the mixer worked yet, so I didn't realize how the aux send worked, and I, I think I got it wrong, but I managed to get sound out of it regardless. After that was done, I saved the YAML file and brought it over to Meta, loaded the patch up, hit play, and got my first hard no from the module. It would not play the patch because of CPU restrictions, so the patch was too CPU intensive for it to play. Uh, so I went in and I deleted the dual looping delay, and then the patch started playing. So I remapped the aux sends to just the valley reverb and played around. You can navigate between knob sets while in knob view, and it's great to have access to so many controls, but you can't access multiple knob sets at once without, I assume, maybe some kind of external MIDI controller. If you're planning on really dialing in your patches for the best experience, I would say put all of your most important and fun controls on one page so you don't feel like you're missing out on you know, the tactile experience that makes modular, in my opinion, fun. Somehow I got this patch to sound terrifying, which is a big win in my book, so despite the CPU issues, I called the day a win. The next day I decided to get much more technical. Having run into my first big hardware bottleneck, I remembered how bad other hardware bottlenecks on devices like this had been in the past, and I decided to test the big one, which is latency. All DSP systems have some kind of latency, it's unavoidable. But the difference between, let's say, 1.5 milliseconds of latency and 6 or 7 is enormous. The first you may not even notice, but the latter starts to sound like an actual, like, audio delay. If a box like this has enough latency, it starts to become useless integrated into a system. It will delay gates and triggers and audio going through it to the point where your patches will be out of sync with themselves. 
I started with an audio test where I took the OP-1 and split its signal. One output went directly into the audio interface, and the other went into the 4MS meta, where I started by setting up a basic instance of the nano mixer just passing the signal through to the outputs. In other devices, this alone has been enough to show unusable latency in the device, but I am happy to report that the meta had no more than 3 milliseconds of latency. You can barely hear it at all in the audio signal. I joked with 4MS that they should have gotten the latency to 4 milliseconds, 4MS instead of 3MS, and they let me know that there actually is an adjustable block size in the settings. You can change the buffer size, which would introduce more latency, but theoretically give the patch more time to be processed. I started loading up modules and effects in the background of this patch to see if latency got worse, like it does in my DAW, as the CPU load increases. Going from around 12% CPU to 50 did nothing to the latency at the 64 block size, so that's great. The next test was the same concept, but with gates. I spit out two identical gate sequences from Pamela's new workout to see if there was an audible latency. Unsurprisingly, it was the same three milliseconds the original audio test had. You can hear it if you're really listening, but I think most people won't notice it. With this test under my belt, it was time to try out a patch I always love to attempt on boxes like this, a drum machine. Using VCB rack, I grabbed three plates and set them up to be kick, snare, and hi-hat respectively. I grabbed a U-graph from Valley, a clone of Mutable Instruments Grids, and set it up. I then mapped a page of knobs on the meta module to control U-graph and a page to control the plates drums. And finally, I set up a send to clouds on the nano performance mixer. Once I got it over to Meta, I set up a new connection so that PAMS would send clock to UGraph just to see if it would work, and it did. PAMS stopped and started the sequence. That's great. I then set up on PAMS a on start gate and used that to trigger the reset of the UGraph input, and that worked as well. Unfortunately, that meant I had used all the gate inputs on the Meta, all two of them, which seems like a small amount for a module with eight outputs. And this is something I've run into before. It feels like with these modules that the balance of I.O. Uh, is rarely perfect. Anyways, the little drum machine worked, and I'm sure this is just one way the meta will be able to do live drums. So that's cool. The next day I had a thought that it would be cool to try a classic Krell patch. If you haven't heard of this before, basically it's a certain kind of self-playing patch made famous through a vintage sci-fi soundtrack. I have a video about it on the other channel, and there's a link in the description. The Krell patch essentially boils down to two looping function generators, or LFOs, and their end-of-cycle output triggering and modulating voices in each other. You want the shape and time of the looping envelopes to constantly shift and be influenced by each other, and the triggers from their end-of-cycle stage are generally used to pick a new voltage for the pitch of the oscillator. Because there's no real random voltage and quantizer option for meta yet, I used marvels as my random voltage generators, which gave me a ton of options and voltage sources. I used the ensemble oscillator and attenuators and mapped a ton of stuff to the meta module controls using one knob on meta to control multiple things at once. I thought the patch was really shaping up and I was excited to give it a go on the module and then VCV got stuck in a crash loop and I lost the patch. Uh, when I got stuck in this loop, I wasn't actually able to hit save in a proper way on the meta module internally in VCV, which means I couldn't even save my patch. So I basically lost the patch, which sucks. But undeterred, I made a second one. Same concept, slightly different module setup. I made use of the macro knob concept again, and this time mapped each mapping with a slightly different range, so one knob did a lot more than just turn things up and down. After that, I hit save on VCV, brought the file over, and once again, Meta said, no, too much going on. And I thought, hey, maybe what if I change the block size to something much higher, uh, because on my, you know, on my DAW, that will mean that I can actually push more through without a buffer underrun, and uh, no, that didn't, that didn't actually fix anything. It still said no, so that's a bummer. I was determined now, though, so I went back to VCV and made a simpler one with plates and much less going on. And this one, happily, did play on meta, and this is what it sounded like. I say that's a win. I love it when a patch does things I can't do myself, and especially after adding some additional LFOs to the mix to play with the plates model, this one really took off.
After this patch, I realized I was feeling done with the module. I had tried out what I wanted to try, established certain boundaries in the module's technical performance, and that was all I really wanted to do with it. I personally love Modular for its hands-on nature, its ability to let me focus lovingly on one module at a time, grabbing a bunch of knobs at once and playing with them as I see fit. And while I've made some very fun stuff in VCB Rack and encourage others to try it if they are thinking about getting into Modular, it's not where I want to be patching. The meta module is probably the best iteration of the quote, everything in a box I've tried so far, and for some it may be exactly what they're looking for. For me, I was happy to give it a try and then send it back to 4MS. So thank you 4MS for allowing me to give it a try, and for those that pick it up, I hope you love it. I hope this has given you insight into how the meta works, some of its limitations and some of its strengths, um, and that's all I wanted to do for you today. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording Modular, and I hope you have a wonderful day.